And then we talk about Alzheimer's, epidemic. Who here has, anyone in your family has suffered from Alzheimer's? Okay. My own grandma ended up with Alzheimer's by the end of her life. She couldn't recognize her own family. She didn't know my name. And it's so heartrending to see somebody you love and, you know, as, as she was one cranky individual at times. She had a fierce wit and could tear anybody to shreds with one comment and one glare. <laughs> but by the end of her life, she was reduced to a, to a kind of puddle. And I thought, wow, I wish I could have my grandma back. Never thought I'd say that sometimes, but it's true because, because you know, she was gone. And um, more and more people are experiencing this in their families because Alzheimer's rates are skyrocketing. But the truth of the matter is, according to Drs. Dean and Aisha Sherzai, who are two of the foremost neurologists in the United States and in the world, we can prevent or reverse 90, not reverse, excuse me, we can prevent 90% of Alzheimer's cases from ever happening in the first place. So here's the th key things you need to know about Alzheimer's. So it, it actually starts about 30 years before symptoms show up. And that, when I said reverse, I was slipping because we can reverse that process. By the time symptoms show up, there may be some things that can be done to slow it down, but there's no really proven ability to actually reverse it at that point. But there are pre-Alzheimer's symptoms that can show up earlier, at which point we can still nip it in the bud, so to speak. And much earlier on, we can stop it from ever having to show up. Right now, about half the people who reach the age of 85 in the United States will die with Alzheimer's in their brains. Symptoms, diagnosable symptoms. But that doesn't have to be the case. The Shirzais have worked with, they work in a very unique community. It's called Loma Linda, California. And Loma Linda is the only blue zone in the United States. Dan Buettner studied the blue zones for National Geographic. He identified regions around the world where people live exceptionally long and healthy lives. And the only one he chose in the United States was Loma Linda, where life expectancy is about 10 years beyond the national average in Loma Linda. So what's so special about Loma Linda? Well, it's a community of Seventh-day Adventists, for the most part, that have landed in this city. And the uh, population is about 50% vegan and about 50% whole foods plant-based, but not necessarily vegan. They've got a whole mix there. But for the most part, they eat pretty healthfully across the board. And they also have a lot of exercise built into the fabric of their lives. And they have a strong sense of faith and purpose. And it makes for a fascinating community for research because there's a mixture of eating patterns within Loma Linda that are somewhat evenly divided. And this is a community where the class and the environment and the ethnicities are all fairly consistent. And so um, there's been a lot of research done. The Loma Linda, or the, the Adventist Health Study is the, the largest um, study of epidemiological study of its kind in world history. It's been going on for many decades. And what researchers are concluding from that study is that within Loma Linda, the people who choose to be vegan or pescatarian have the longest life expectancy within Loma Linda by about eight or nine years compared to the omnivores. Fascinating, right? And with most epidemiological studies, you can say, oh, well, how do we know that the vegans aren't also less likely to smoke, more likely to take care of themselves, more likely to have positive thoughts, more li likely to have strong social ties, more likely to, you know, um, do all the other things that are associated with health. So it can be confusing to how to separate that out. But in Loma Linda, we've got a community of people who are all living in very consistent and similar ways, practicing a consistent, similar faith. So it makes it a little bit easier to look at the impact of dietary differences within that community. So the Shirzais are working in Loma Linda as neurologists, and their practice includes people from within the community and also people from nearby, some of whom are eating in the uh, plant-based way and some of whom are not. And they report that th overall, the population in their region is about 50-50, whole foods plant-based and not. And they have, pers they have diagnosed about 3,000 cases of Alzheimer's over the last couple of decades with their patients. And of those 3,000 or so cases, how many do you think were whole foods plant-based? 
19. 19 out of 3,000. Now, that's anecdotal. They're very clear. This is not, uh, you know, does, doesn't stand up to the rigors of medical research. But when you have something anecdotal with that many people involved, you know, the plural of anecdotal is data, right? 3,000 and 19 is a pretty dramatic, striking number, right? So they have looked at extensively at the research, and they have concluded that people who eat a whole foods, plant-based diet and get plenty of exercise and have strong social ties and don't exercise and practice other basic, healthy lifestyle choices can reduce their odds of getting Alzheimer's by about 90%, which is pretty striking when you look at the impact of this disease on our peoples and communities. And they're very clear that anybody who has not actually landed in diagnosis and symptoms still has the opportunity to apply these kinds of choices and get tremendous results.